Hello creative friends, I hope you're well. In this video I am reunited with an old favorite theme of mine which is painting cityscapes. I haven't painted one in a while and I thought it would be the perfect opportunity to also try a technique I've been meaning to experiment with which is using a plastic card to swoosh the paint around. I like to say that word. Uh, I've done this technique with acrylic paints in the past but using it with watercolor is new to me and it was a bit of a challenge but I have some tips I can pass on to you. First you will need a lot of water. Water puddles in this case will be your friends. So with a large brush I picked up clean water from my jar and left puddles where I wanted to paint the first layer of buildings that are far in the distance. Then I dropped paints gray into the puddles and the paint at this point is quite diluted because I am establishing the farthest plane of the cityscape. So the farthest the subjects are, the lighter they are. And then using an old hotel cart, I moved the paint around to shape the buildings. Because I have a lot of water, I was able to spread the color easily enough, but you have to keep in mind that by scraping the paint, the paper will absorb the paint quite fast and once that happens you cannot move it anymore it is set there so there's this unpredictability to the technique that i have learned to embrace and you're probably wondering at this point why i decided to use a card instead of a brush that's because i wanted to get a few sharp and clean edges on the building which is more challenging to do with a regular brush so that was my aim of course, this method doesn't allow for precision, and I think this is also very attractive to me. I do love a good abstract cityscape. Once I was done with the painting and scraping the first layer, I let the paper dry completely, and then I repeated the process with the second layer of buildings. Now these are closer to us, we're moving towards the foreground, so I made sure to pick up more pigment with my brush, but the color is still added to puddles of water, so it will lighten up, especially after I'm done scraping. I was very mindful not to shape the buildings the same way as I did in the first layer, so varying the positioning and also trying to vary the way I scraped and using both edges of the card, the short and the long side. And that also helped in getting the different shapes. I also decided to add some shading to this layer by adding more paint on the left side of the buildings just for added interest and also to give a little bit more perspective on the whole painting. You've probably noticed that there are some scratches on the paper and that's because I was not always gentle when I was scraping. I did that on purpose actually because I wanted to create drama and contrast. The contrast will come when I add the gentle pastel-ish doodles over the gray and I guess you could say it's rough meets pretty <laughs> and I love that. Again, I let everything dry before I painted the last layer and this time around I used my brush just because I wanted it dark and if I had 
added the amount of water needed for the scraping, I would have lost the intensity of the color. The second color I added is Jaune Brilliant No. 1 by Holbein and I love how it plays against the paint's gray. This color has a lot of white in its composition and I want to say it's pretty really close to a gouache but not as opaque of course. So when I added it to the paint or to the wet paint's gray of that last layer, it showed up still. So it's a lot of fun to play with. And I also added a bit of that yellow to the sky so that my color composition would be more balanced, but not on the entire sky. I just chose a couple of spots. Contrary to how I usually doodle, I sketched them, I sketched these ones with a pencil this time around. And my intention was to cover all the doodles with a paint pen. But after I sketched the flowers in the sky, I really liked the look. So apart from adding some shading inside the flowers, these ones are going to stay as is. And I think it ties in really well with the gray of the buildings. I know I'm going to get a few questions about the graphite pencils that I used and just as a reminder, all the supplies are listed in the description of this video. So you just have to click on show more or the down arrow if you're watching on a mobile device and scroll all the way down to supplies. However, I can tell you that I use uh, an HB lead in both of the pencils that I use. So this one is a graph stone by Carandash but it's an HB uh, pencil or HB lead, I should say. And this one, the mechanical pencil is a Muji pen and it has a 0.3 millimeter lead, but it's also an HB lead. To add more interest to the painting, I decided to add a few leaves on branches and the shapes are going to be painted in with acrylic gouache. It's Acrylla by Holbein. However, I think that this color is too close to the beige that I used from the Posca paint pen. So I wish in hindsight that I had used a darker color. The one that I'm using is Pale Peach. I have another color in my arsenal. It's a little bit darker and I may repaint it at some point. Like I may go over these leaves. The reason why I didn't do it <laughs> before the video ended is that I just found it uh, just before I started recording this voiceover. I had forgotten I had it in my stash. I will probably paint over that just to make a difference, I guess, because the colors are not exactly the same, but at a very quick glance, you, can, you can't really discern them. I mean, I still like it, but... <laughs> It bothers me <laughs> a little bit. Gouache is something, I think I've mentioned this before, but it's something that I want to get better at using. It's different than watercolor. The paint is thicker. I find it's a bit challenging to have clean edges with gouache, but that's probably because I'm not using enough water. What I wanted to do here is have the color as opaque as possible because I'm going over the dark gray. But I think if I had added 
a tiny bit more water and that would have helped me create these clean edges and I just would have had to go over the leaves the second time which I ended up doing anyways but I love gouache I think the the mix of watercolor and gouache is so powerful because unlike watercolor you can paint from dark to light as opposed to with watercolor you have to go from light to dark Adding the windows or the lights in the windows and the buildings was quite interesting. I had no idea <laughs> how to go about it. I didn't want to add too many. I added enough to attract the attention, but I didn't want to make it look cartoony. So that's why I didn't add a lot of them. The size, I think I could have gotten away with just adding um, smaller dots as opposed to these big dots, but I did what I thought was right. And once you add that paint, um, this is paint, uh, a paint marker, you can't erase them. So I was very mindful not to create too much similarity or too much um, equal repetitions just because I thought it didn't lend itself really well to the style of the painting. I mean, overall, I'm pretty happy with the painting. <laughs> I'm just picking at it because I created it and I can. <laughs> but I refrained from redoing this because I did a project just before that and I wasn't happy with it. It wasn't a cityscape, it was something else. And I was totally unhappy with the colors. I have to admit that I'm struggling these days with my art. I find that I'm again all over all over the place. I I kind of veered off momentarily from doodling and I missed it, but I wasn't quite sure how to reintroduce it into my work. And what I'm trying to find at this point is a happy medium. I'm trying to find something that will allow me to combine everything that I enjoy making into one cohesive style. I know that a style is a very tricky topic to talk about. I, I don't think that style is even the right word for it, but I want to, when I sit down at my desk to create, I want to have clarity as to what format my paintings will take um, so I'm learning I'm 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 I guess I'm in the questioning phase right now <laughs> maybe it's the end of the year that's getting to me there's lots to do uh, but we'll get there at the same time as everyone else <laughs> 
So the painting is pretty much done, unless I'm totally missing something. Oh, I will add a little bit of silver paint. No gold this time. I know, shocking. <laughs> but I will be adding some metallic, so it's it's the sterling or white silver, I guess. You can call it different ways, but um, it's also by Kramer. And uh, yeah, that's uh, pretty much it. Adding just some shading inside the petals with the graphite pencil. I love the effect. And this is something that I also want to incorporate in more of my paintings. Also the use of color pencils. Gosh, there's so many <laughs> mediums, or media I should say, that I can use over watercolor. Sometimes I feel like it's a little bit overwhelming. Maybe that's the problem that I'm dealing with right now. I'm kind of overwhelmed with all the kinds of supplies I can use. But um, anyways, I'm going to leave you on that note. <laughs> I'm not complaining. I'm just picking up my work momentarily. <laughs> I hope that if you are in um, in the States and you're celebrating Thanksgiving, I know it's a very important holiday for you. Uh, I hope that you have had and are continuing to have a good time. I know times are rough. You're probably not able to reunite with your loved ones, but I hope that you can still get in touch with them either via the internet or by phone. And I hope you're still enjoying your vacation slash holidays. Thank you all so very much for watching. Of course, as usual, I want to say a huge thank you to my patrons for supporting my art over at Patreon. Also, a big thank you to those that have left comments for Steph, my daughter, who appeared in the video last week. She thanks all of you. Have a wonderful, safe, and creative day, and I will see you soon.